The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took bread said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. And of course, happy Easter during these uh, beautiful days of Easter. Today in the Gospel passage, we have this uh, great image, this great story of the two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, and there's really, it's filled with profound sim symbolism and great spiritual depth. And I think that if we want to understand this scripture passage well, it really is necessary that we look at some of the symbolism that is present in this reading in order to perceive what is meant to be learned. First of all, in the scripture passage, we hear that these two disciples are leaving the city of Jerusalem, and that is very significant. If you read in the scriptures and you see the word Jerusalem, you should always be aware that Jerusalem in scripture has three possible meanings, or maybe all three at once. 
Jerusalem is the symbol of heaven in sacred scripture. Jerusalem is the symbol of the church in sacred scripture. And Jerusalem simply means, well, the real physical city that exists on earth. And so when we hear about these disciples leaving the city of Jerusalem, we can conclude from a spiritual symbolism perspective that, you know, they're running away. They are leaving the place that is the symbol of heaven. They're walking away from the church. They're leaving that physical city, which is the only place on earth at this moment where the disciples of Christ live. So their leaving Jerusalem has profound religious significance. You see, they're afraid. Jesus has been crucified, and they're afraid the same thing might happen to them. They are unwilling to pay the possible cost of discipleship, and they're afraid, so they leave the church symbolically. Now, of course, because Jesus loves us even when we make silly decisions and he never stops pursuing us, our Lord walks with them as they're running from the city of Jerusalem and talks to them about sacred scripture. And then at the end of their journey, he pretends to be going farther along and they invite Jesus to participate with them, to come into the inn and stay with them. And then something amazing happens. During the meal where they're eating, Jesus takes the bread, he gives thanks, he breaks it, and he gives it to them. Of course, we know immediately that the breaking of the bread is the symbol of the Eucharist. It's kind of fascinating to think about it that here, for the second time, Jesus celebrates the Holy Mass. We all know the first Mass Jesus ever celebrated was at the Last Supper. And today, on the road to Emmaus, he celebrates the second Mass. And he breaks bread and gives it to the disciples. And then all of a sudden, their eyes are opened. And they recognize them, him. And then St. Luke tells us something beautiful. Jesus vanished from their sight. But take note, Jesus did not leave them. He vanished from their sight so they couldn't see him physically anymore. But Jesus was still very much there in the presence of the Eucharist. Jesus, through this miracle, is teaching the whole church to remember that you may not see me physically, but I am with you in a new form in the Holy Eucharist. Jesus is present here, truly, really present in the Eucharist. He vanished from sight, but he did not leave. Rather, he stays with his church in a new form. And when they perceive this presence of Christ, when they have this experience of knowing Jesus, in the breaking of the bread, all of a sudden their fears are not worth their attention. They jump up and they return to Jerusalem. And by this point, having experienced the presence of God, seeing Jesus and recognizing him in the Eucharist, they're ready to pay whatever the price is to be a disciple of Jesus. Experiencing Jesus makes us disciples willing to pay the price of discipleship, always. You see, knowing Jesus causes us to be generous. If we have experienced Jesus, if you have experienced Jesus in the breaking of the bread, if you have seen him in the form of the Eucharist, and you know him, then generosity naturally flows from our lives to those around us, and to those in need. Now, that's particularly important today. We talk about the generosity of the Christian community because today we begin our annual CSA appeal. And I'm asking you to manifest your generosity. I know that you have experienced Jesus. I know that you find him in the breaking of the bread. And now I ask that experience to overflow in your generous donation to the CSA program for this year. The CSA is a good thing. It is a great program. It does all kinds of wonderful things. It pays for the education of our seminarians, which is very expensive. We have about 13 guys 
studying every year. That's a lot of money that we have to pay for, for, for the education of our future priests. The CSA pay, pays for, assists our retired sisters and our retired priests after all of the years of good service. We need to take care of them in their retirement. The CSA is also an arm of charity. And you know, sometimes people say, you know, I want to do something. I see these people walking around. I want to do something for those people who are poor and in need. Well, if that's true, the CSA is an arm of charity. It takes care of those who are in need in the diocese, throughout the country, and even throughout the whole world. If you want to know how to do charity, the CSA really is a way to make that happen. So what I'm asking you is to be generous and sacrificial. And I hope that every person in the parish will give some sacrificial offering to the CSA as a way of participating in the great ministry of the church. I myself definitely intend to make a sacrificial offering to the CSA. Sacrifice is a necessary component in real generosity. It's interesting, Gandhi said that it is the absurdity of, of the modern society that people think they can worship God without sacrifice. Sacrifice is an essential component in our generosity toward God. Truthfully, last year's CSA was not super awesome. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe you are all still angry that you lost your awesome pastor from last year. I don't blame you, Father Kevin was a great, he is a great priest, I can see that. You were not used to me, perhaps, and you were sort of a little bit not really willing to give. I don't know. Maybe you were afraid of the economy last year. Everything seemed to be going south. But you know what? We're all still here. God took care of us. And so I'd ask you this year to not be afraid. To give with generosity, knowing that God is always there. When we give with generosity, God always gives to us in greater return. What we're going to do now is I simply am asking, I'm going to give you a few minutes. Father Jordan is going to give you a few minutes at the conclusion of this homily. In your pews, there are CSA cards. I'm going to ask you to fill those out. If you can fill them out right now and put them into, deposit them in the collection. Otherwise, you can take them home and pray about it a little bit more time. Uh, but just to fill those out in a few minutes, deposit them in the collection. But before they, we do that, I'd like us to, to conclude with a prayer. Father Mercy, we believe that Jesus is here. We have experienced his presence, and we thank you for the gift of the breaking of the bread where we are changed, where we are made true disciples so that generosity may overflow in our lives. Inspire us to know what kind of sacrificial gift we should make to you and to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. And of course, I thank you in advance for your generosity and for your great love for this parish and for the Church of the Diocese of Gary. God bless you.